Hi everyone. I thought it would be fun to teach you how to do, um, or at least how I like to do, watercoloring. And I'm going to use the Happy Moments stamp set from the Celebrations catalog. And I'm going to use the flowers. I'm going to show you two different techniques. I'm going to show you how to use the blender pen color, but I'm also going to show you how to use the aqua painter. I'm going to start with just some Whisper White cardstock, and I'm going to show you how to use the blender pen first. I'm going to use stays on for both of these techniques, which I love to use, especially anytime I'm going to color my image. Now I'm going to use my block D, my Stampin' Up block D, with my little flower bouquet. Stick that on, just hold that on for a couple seconds so it can get a good grip. Ink this up with my black stays on love that I can see where I'm stamping. Okay. Now, here's a piece of watercolor paper. Sorry about the clock in the background. Should have thought about that. I'm going to go ahead and stamp that as well in basic black on a piece of watercolor paper because that's my favorite medium for stamping on if I'm going to use my aqua painter. But I'm going to quick show you how I like to do <clears throat> the blender pen as well. I'm going to take my ink pad. I'm just going to give it a squeeze. This is so saffron. I'm going to use pretty and pink. So saffron. Old olive. Move this out of the way. So I have more room. And then bashful blue. So you can see all my palettes. Now, I usually start with my lightest color. That's just me. I'm going to start with the So Saffron, and I'm going to get color on my flower in the center all over. The blender pans dry a lot quicker than the Aqua Painter. Just color those in. Clean off your blender pan. I'm going to move on to my pink. trying to get pink all over. It's okay to have a little bit of white. I actually prefer that. So we start on one side and work your way over, then you'll create a natural shadow. Pick up a little more color. For me, watercoloring is all about layering. So let's do a little bit of old olive. I want my leaves to be darker on the bottom that's where I'm assuming that my sunlight is coming from the top down so all my shading is going to be at the bottom and then I'll just quick go over the stems as well the blender pen loses some of its color you can go back in and fill that in okay so I have one coat of color on now I'm going to go back with the same colors and add a little bit more detail for example on the yellow I'm going to make the dots a little bit darker and I go over the lines, put a little bit more color down at the bottom. Now, on the Whisper White cardstock, the more you rub it with the aqua paint or the uh, blender pen, the um, more opportunity you have for it to smudge. So just keep that in mind. That's another reason I really like using watercolor paper. So I'm just filling in those dark lines because we'd have a little bit of a shadow there if it were a real flower a little bit darker color at the bottom or a little bit more coloring for watercoloring really for me it's all about layering that color on and then fill in the center now just one more time I'm going to go back and add a little bit more color to the bottom of those leaves and I don't think I did this stem or at least it's not showing so I'm going to add a little bit more color to that Okay, so that's a quick technique for blend, uh, coloring with your blender pen. And the only other thing that I really like to do, and you can do this with your stamp pad, or you can do it with a marker. I kind of find that my old Stampin' Write marker of the Blush Blossom color actually tends to be a little bit lighter for some reason. And so it gives me a great shadow. And I'm going to go all the way around each of these flowers. Just being real quick. It's so light that you don't need to 
be too awfully particular with it. Okay, and all that does to me for me is that makes my flowers pop up just a little bit more. Can you see that? If you look at the photo, this is not the best camera in the world, but if you look at the photo of the card, you'll be able to maybe see that a little bit more in the still image. So then I've just put it on my card, as you see here, and that's it. Now let me show you how to use your aqua painter to watercolor. Like I said, I love to watercolor. It's very therapeutic for me. So I have my aqua painter, have it full of water. And now I'm just going to do the exact same thing I did before, except I want to get it primed a little bit by actually getting a little bit of water running into my brush so it's wet. don't want it to be too wet, otherwise it takes a long time to dry. Okay, so just pick up some color. Okay. Clean that off. I've just got my stamp and scrub over here on the side. I'm just squeezing some water through it. I'm going to pick up some pretty and pink. Do the same thing with my rose. You'll see with this, since there's so much more water, it just kind of puddles up on top of it. Don't worry about it. Just let it soak in. Clean your aqua painter again. Pick up the next color. Okay. So you can, can you see how pale those are? with your old olive. Now obviously with darker colors they're going to be more intense when you first put them on. Can you see? don't want to cover it up with my hand. Okay so one layer down. Now I'm going to go back to my So Saffron and if at any time you feel like you're not picking enough, up enough color just close your stamp pad again. Give it another squeeze. And pick up some more color. So then go back in, layer on some more color. I usually will do this about three layers. I will show you um, a little bit of a, a quick cheater method after this layer. One more color on the bottom the blue flower and then in the center we'll make that a little bit darker as well. This dark old olive I probably won't need another another layer just two layers is going to be enough because it's so dark. Now here's the cheater method. Once you have all your layers on if you really want to go back in and add some intensity to it then um, I recommend using um, your markers on the pink and add just a little bit more darkness because your paper's still wet. It's still holding some of that water. It's not going to be like it would be, for example, if I scribbled right onto the paper. Put a little bit more around the bottom. Now after you do that though, go back in with your blender pen and make sure you don't leave any lines that are too harsh. Put the brush in with the bashful blue. You can actually start out this way as well. I, don't, I feel like um, when I do that though, I it's quicker for one, I love that about it, but I don't feel like I get quite as much um, control over it. Now my So Saffron, just going over those lines, we test the dots at the top, and there you have it. Again, if you need to blend it in, then feel free to do that. The watercolor paper is much more forgiving when it comes to blending. And again, with my So Saffron marker, but you could also do this with your stamp pad just as well. Okay, there you have it. Can you see? Here it is on our card. The completed card is the Whisper White one, and this is the watercolor. Here's how I like to do a quick, easy, simple watercolor, and I hope that you will come back and visit me again. Thanks!